<laughs> Hello, my name is Ron Burgundy. Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Josh Lynn. I'm with Affin Communication. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about how to get issues resolved inside of uh, resolved or addressed when dealing with um, large organizations, large companies. Uh, I'd like to start with a couple questions. Have you ever had to call into a company to make sure you got a um, could be a telephone refund or a refund for some bill that you have? It could be a telephone company that you've um, you've got a circuit that's down with them. Um, have you ever had to call into a company to say get a refund or um, get support like like Dell or HP or um, maybe there's a your internet's down um, to call into the DMV to get something straightened out? How'd it go? It's frequently the same thing out there. Whether you're calling into a utility company, a support company um, like Dell or HP or pretty much any large organization to get something addressed. What I'm getting at is your job probably wasn't done after that first phone call, was it? No. Ever call into a company to find out that they had no record of your previous phone call or conversation or commitments that they made to you? It's pretty frustrating, isn't it? And the part that really sucks is that you're only calling in uh, because something is broken and, and you need to get it fixed, right? Like maybe your phone is down, your internet's down, you know, something's broken and it needs to be fixed. There's three key things that every company should do when they're working on a problem for you. They should A, accept ownership of the problem. Um, they should A, accept ownership of resolving the issue to your satisfaction. They should B, continue to work the, with the problem until it's resolved. And C, communicate. And C, communicate accurate status back to you on a regular basis throughout the duration of the problem. Our experience is that large companies, in our case telephone companies, rarely take actual ownership of the problem. Our experience is that large companies, in our case telephone companies, rarely take actual ownership. Our experience is that these larger companies, in our case telephone companies, rarely take actual ownership of problems. You end up having to be the one who takes the ownership. But the question is, how do you do that? Um, I'm going to share a couple uh, tips that are uh, um, basically how we achieve a lot of our success here at Affent when working with other companies and getting issues resolved. While you're on, one, while you're on the call, first, while you're on the call, keep the proper pressure on, not anger pressure. Sometimes the person on the other end of the line tends to treat you like like one of a million other problems that they have to solve or will encounter that day, particularly in large organizations. To avoid that, we keep pressing on our request. We expect a high level of service and we hold them to it. The pressure I reference can come through a variety of ways. Um, sometimes all on the same phone call. The pressure I reference can come through a variety of forms, sometimes even all on the same phone call. It's almost sometimes a back and forth. Whichever tool works best, you know, using whichever tool works, it's almost a back and forth sometimes, using um, whichever tool works best at the time. Um, sometimes you're going to express concern uh, or frustration as needed, um, urgency, even understanding or not understanding as needed. Here's a trick. 
if you need a better explanation. Here's a trick. If you need a better explanation or a more detailed explanation of what's to come, plays if you don't understand or, or what some people call uh, being not okay. See, it's in human nature to rescue people who need help and, and that's the card that we're going to play on. Um, so when you act, and I do say kindly, when you act as though you don't fully understand what the process is, they will typically come back and walk you through that process. This will in turn open doors for you to clarify and ask more questions about what their process is, um, thus giving you far better insight into their process and the expectations that you can you know, either set for your customers or walk away with yourself. So that's one, keep the proper pressure on. Uh, two, um, regular contact. And by that, I mean consistent. Um, keep the touch regular and the status constant. Um, figure out the best frequency of calling, uh, which motivates the company you're working with to the best course of action. <clears throat> that may mean that may mean calling in once an hour or, or maybe every two um, or even less. We, we regularly, very regularly call telephone companies such as AT&T every 20 minutes. Sometimes companies will tell you right off the bat um, something crazy like this will be assigned to a technician within two to four hours and in that time your headquarters is going to be down the entire time. <laughs> uh, do you wait those two to four hours? Sometimes companies will tell you right off the bat, this this case, this whatever it may be, will be assigned to a technician within two to four hours. And you're like, what? You know, my headquarters is down and you're telling me it could be four hours? Um, we're probably not just going to sit by and let that occur, right? Um, you probably call in sooner. I know we do. Um, and just you get a human on the phone and you see what can be done. See, the key here is that you're keeping proper pressure on them through regular and constant contact. This is not to say that you are um, this is not to say that you're mean. Not at all. These are humans you're working with to achieve your outcomes. It's the humans that are going to give you the best out. These are humans you're working with to achieve your outcomes. Be respectful with them. At our company, we don't always get we don't always get issues resolved because of sheer technical expertise. Um, frequently, it's because we apply incredible amounts of pressure on the vendor or the company through setting um, clear expectations, clear communication, and status time frames and escalations and and you know I referenced earlier calling in every 20 minutes sometimes we just annoy somebody into um, you know what I'm gonna get rid of them first by fixing their issue documentation if you're taking notes and I believe everyone inside a company should take notes on issues they're working with. Be sure to clearly label your notes in the case, project, or ticket. Number three, documentation. If you're taking notes, and, and I firmly believe everyone should take notes uh, when you're working issues for a company, and even personally, even, um, be sure to clearly label your notes in the case, or project, or ticket, or wherever it is that you're tracking this issue at. Um, Put a descriptive yet succinct title um, on your note. If it's an escalation, include that in the title or put something that indicates you spoke with management. Uh, something that indicates you know a, a positive change in the case. You know that it, it got escalated and from this point forward, you know it's it's at some certain you know trajectory. Uh, a good title it, it grabs attention. Um, it makes it easy for people to see who are skimming through the notes in, in, in reference 
Um, and they don't have to drill down inside the note if you create a good title. Um, side note, sometimes your customer is going to ask you for documentation of the work you did. Um, in my experience, this is typically, um, typically happens when they're looking for a reimbursement um, for, like, say, downtime circuits that went down or, or something. If our notes show specific um, specifics such as uh, at 3.30 p.m. Pacific time, I escalated uh, this to level two inside of AT&T. John Clark was the floor manager. Um, he confirmed the escalation and said we can call back within one hour for status. His direct line is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Then that goes a long way to show that we're on top of this. It, it builds credibility. Um, it, it shows uh, it shows that you've done your diligence. And if there's a conflict with the other company's notes and yours are this detailed, um, it, you're probably going to be able to set the, the course of action based off of your notes uh, and not theirs. This goes a long way in, in lending credibility to your case. It also, another piece that does, it, which is inside of your company, is it greatly eases the transfer of the work over to one of your coworkers um, at the end of your shift or at your lunch break. <clears throat> Number four, escalate. Um, Number four, escalate. Escalating is an incredibly valuable tool which is underutilized and, and often just forgotten about. Too many people waste their time um, continuing to work with the same person who is not getting them any results. Maybe, uh, you know, I'm speculating, but maybe some people want to, uh, maybe they feel that they, they want to avoid conflict, um, which maybe escalation can be viewed as, or, or maybe they don't want to hurt the other person's feelings. Um, I don't know. But what we do know is that we need to escalate when the time is proper. Um, but, but when is that? You know? So in a nutshell, I'd say basically um, the proper times are any time that your case or uh, ticket um, is available for escalation, um, escalate it. Or any time you feel the person you are working with is not uh, making the progress that they should. Um, Uh, consequently, if at any time someone is acting disrespectfully to you, escalate uh, or request another person. That that goes without saying, I hope. Um, so, first off, there are a couple forms of escalation. Uh, you can you can escalate the priority of a case or a ticket. You can escalate past a technician that's working on the case or a person who's who isn't gaining the ground that they should. Uh, you can escalate within management. Um, lastly, uh, there are times where you're even going to want to uh, call outside of the organization, the direct organization you're working with over into the sales uh, side of the house and pull in your um, account manager or sales rep to uh, put pressure on from the sales side of the house. Uh, when you escalate, there are four key pieces of information that you have to get. Um, this can be on the technical or the management side of the house. Um, oftentimes, there are three levels of um, technician, technical persons, um, and you can you can es you can escalate amongst them as well as the management side of the house. When you escalate, there are um, four pieces of information that you need to get. And it could apply to two different sides of the house, typically. Um, there's, when you escalate, there are um, basically uh, four pieces of information that you need to get. And it's been our experience uh, working with these larger organizations. Um, there's frequently two sides of the house. There's the technical or or customer support side, and then there's there's the management. And they work hand in hand. Um, 
uh, what we find is there's often you know a couple levels, uh, typically three levels of, of technical um, support, and um, you can escalate amongst them, uh, and then you can also escalate amongst the management side of the house. So the the first item that we, so the the first piece of information that we have to get is the the name, the title, and the direct phone number of the person. Uh, this is being escalated to. That, that's key. Uh, so the first thing that we need to get is the name, the title, and the direct phone number of the person this is being escalated to. Um, number two, uh, we need to get the escalation level of the ticket or the case that they have inside of their system. Number three, um, you need to find out when you, at, at the same time, number three, you need to find out um, when you can expect the next escalation or next action. They should be able to tell you that, you know, within um, one hour this case can be escalated to the next level or whatever the case may be. But you need to find that out. That way you know when you can take that next step. Uh, number four, um, what time uh, he or she, you know, the duty supervisor or manager is on duty until. Um, too frequently we escalate something, get a hold of somebody who can actually do some good, and we call back an hour later and they say, yeah, he went home for the day. So get, you know, when you escalate to them, find out what time their shift is over at, and then when you find that out, you can then find out the next piece, which is who will be his or her replacement. Again, um, always document the above inside of a clearly labeled note. Okay, so um, so what I want to do is overview the importance or or um, clarify the importance of why we're gonna why we're gonna ask these questions and push this case this way. First, it, it protects you and the company you represent, whether that's just your company or your your customers. Um, there have been many times uh, where an engineer, or even worse, a client gets on the phone with, you know, in our case, the telephone company, only to find out that that, that case is still only at level one. And this is after hours, uh, even a day of working something. Um, you don't want to be that person left with, oh, oh man, I asked a technician a couple hours ago if it was escalated, and he said yes. You know, that's, that's too vague. You get specific. Um, ask direct questions and get direct answers. Be specific. Okay, uh, here's a little example. Um, telephone company says uh, that they're going to dispatch and repair a problem first thing in the morning. Okay, that's great. Um, I mean, you know, if that's the best they can do. Um, Okay, here's an example. Um, say we got a, uh, a, again, in our case is the telephone company world. Uh, we got a circuit down for a customer, um, and it, it's coming into evening time, night time, where, where they're not going to be able to get out that night, and so it's going to be a next day kind of thing. So we ask the, the telephone company, you know, what's the next step? And they say, um, oh, good news, uh, we're going to get out there uh, to, to repair the problem first thing in the morning. And, that, and that's good news. You can walk away with that a lot of the time. Um, or, and, that, and that's good news. A lot of time people will just walk away with that information. But it's actually kind of vague. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of um, uh, role playing here, I guess, with just myself right now. But um, um, here's how we can clarify and get to an even better answer that's a little bit more... Um, descriptive, a little more, it sets a better expectation with, that you'll be able to carry over to your customer. Um, so when the customer, when the telephone company says, okay, we're going to, we're going to dispatch to repair the problem first thing in the morning, you know, okay, what I might answer with is first thing in the morning and uh, just be quiet and let them respond next and they'll say some, or you can say um, first thing in the morning, what does that mean? And they'll respond with something like, yes, 8 a.m. And to that, uh, we'd respond, so does that mean that the telephone company is going to be at our customer's facility at 8 a.m.? 
knocking on the front door to be let in, or are they just showing up to the telephone company office at 8 a.m., and they still need to attend the daily OSHA meeting, and then go pack up their truck before even leaving the yard? And the telephone company might respond with, well, actually there's no guarantee. Uh, our business opens at 8 a.m. And, and then that would then allow me to respond with something along the lines of, so would it be more accurate to tell our customer that at 8 a.m. the dispatch ticket goes to the first available field technician, you know, uh, and, and that they may or may not actually be working on the circuit uh, in, in that first hour. Um, and that the customer shouldn't necessarily expect to see that field technician per se, since he may be working, you know, at the little green box out on the corner of the street, down the road actually. And, and so what I'm doing is I'm just I'm kind of helping clarify uh, the situation, and um, and it enables me to go back to the customer with a um, very clear expectation that in turn we can document. Um, and you know, reflect back on the next morning when we're trying to push things along again the next day. The end.